What's going on guys, First of Vaspers here, bring you a brand new video, and what I have for you guys this week, this is going to be my full bag reveal, since you guys did break that 5 like mark, I'm going to go ahead and make that video, it's going to be broken up into two segments, so the first segment is going to be hard baits and swim baits, and the next segment is going to be the soft baits that I have in my bag, so we're going to go ahead and kick it off uh, with the crankbait box, and so this is something that my dad just gave me, this is a uh, deep diving crankbait, the DD22, so pretty big crankbait there in lavender shad color, um, has some very good purple glare to it. So I'm excited to use that in a more of a deep water situation, maybe fishing ledges and stuff like that. Probably might use it on the BFL on Lanier. So we'll see about that. And then going into the square bills, of course I have to have my gizzard shad color. Green gizzard shad, one of my favorite ones to use. And then. Something like the chartreuse sexy shad looks always looks good. Moving into more of like a chartreuse color, I have both of these. Uh, you can see it there, but the <laughs> the chartreuse in black and then the chartreuse in blue. So let's see if I can get this. This is another fat free shad. This is kind of a medium diving crankbait, also in the citrus shad color. Uh, so that one dives down a little bit deeper than these square bills do, and it has more of that tighter walk tighter action rather than a wobble or a waggle that these KVD square bills have and so I've already done a video on those so I don't want to show these too much because I'm pretty sure you guys already know what all square bills I have you guys have been watching these other videos but moving into something like shad wraps I have uh, shad wrap number seven here in like more of a kind of tigerish chartreuse blue pattern so pretty good shad wrap number seven might paint one of these other ones because I do have two of those. So and that one's a shad wrap number five in just the black color. Also a very good effective bait. And then this is a glass wrap, I believe they call it. It has a piece of glass, like kind of a painted ceramic type of glass in there. Uh, it kind of reflects the reflects the light down in the water. Caught some fish off of that. Nothing too special, but. The shad wraps are a are very big fish catcher here in these Georgia lakes. So make sure you, if you guys fish in Georgia or anything around the south region to have those uh, shad wraps in your box. Just to have them because you never know whenever you might have to use them. They work really good on schooling fish as well. And then this is, I have a couple of these half ounce red eye shads. So these are the bigger ones. This is a gizzard shad color so that looks really good. And I have some other brighter colors in here. But that's another thing that I keep in my box as far as crankbaits go. And now moving down to the bottom half, I have these guys down here. And this right here is a Lucky Craft pointer. Then along with another kind of cheaper brand pointer there, or jerkbait. So I'm hoping to get, I'm actually getting the deep diving crank jerkbait, KVD, Strike King coming in in this next tackle warehouse order which I should have an unboxing video coming up soon as well just because we got a big order coming in uh, for these next couple tournaments to have throughout the months so I need to restock on some stuff and get some new stuff to try uh, mainly soft plastics got some a jerk bait I wasn't gonna get deep diving crank baits but then my dad actually was nice enough to give me some so shout out to my dad for providing me with some of these crank baits and other stuff that I would use because you know he has a lot of stuff and he never hardly ever uses them so then that's a sabeel little swim bait uh, we have bigger ones out in the shop but that's kind of the one that i just keep in my box just in case i need to use it and then we have over here this is a boy ducket 1.2.5 crankbait this is something i got in my mystery tackle box as well as this this was a live target bait ball that i got uh, I believe it was around like $13 or so. Uh, this makes a good bit of noise, has the resemblance of a bait school, so I'm hoping to try that out. The one time I did throw it, it was very tough out there on the lake, and I ended up actually hooking another threadfin shad. So, I mean, I guess it must look like it because I actually hooked one of the things that I was supposed to be resembling, which is actually kind of funny. And this is a DT15, another big crankbait that my dad gave me, kind of more of a bluish chartreuse kind of color pretty good dives up the 15 feet uh, he also gave me some of these Daiwa titanium blade ones so this is kind of a smaller 
size than this one. It's more of a natural shad type look. And this is more of a tiger color. Tiger chartreuse type color. And they both have titanium blades, which are supposed to be better. I'm not sure what it'll do to the action of it, but uh, um, supposedly it's supposed to improve them. Those are high quality crankbaits, so I'm excited to use those as well. And here's some of the red eye shads that I got from my last tackle on warehouse boxing. So I'm sure you guys have seen that as well. Those are the half ounce, no, quarter ounce. Yeah, no, half ounce. These are the half ounce red eye shads. The quarter ounce are the small ones, and these big ones are the three fourths ounce. I believe I said that wrong earlier. But the big one that I showed you guys, that was the three fourths ounce one, the biggest one you can get. And then here's some topwater base. This is like a popper with some uh, feather bristles on the end, kind of brighter just to kind of get that shad glimmer on the surface. Only this one has some feathers along with the shad glimmer. And then I have also a torpedo down there that's all raggled and beaten up, so not even camera worthy. I'm just kidding. It might actually work better, better, but it's all wrapped up in some hooks and stuff. This is a Gary Yamamoto bait that I actually got on sale at Bass Pro Shops. Uh, it's more of a chartreuse and it has some kind of glass 3D technology in there. I don't know if you guys can see that flashing around, but it's supposed to be good for catching light and it dives around like 8, 9, 10 feet, somewhere around there. And so I also have some blade baits and spoons and some other crank baits that I don't ever use that my dad gave me. Uh, they're just kind of, I, I just haven't had time to tie them on and try them out yet. But here's the blade bait that I usually use. I don't know what brand it is. These are actually ones that my dad gave me because we catch hybrids and stuff off of them in Oconee. And so he just ended up giving me one. And then this is a spoon, just a normal silver spoon, of course. So I always have those handy just in case you need to get on some schooling fish. So that gets done with box number one. Time to move over to the next box that's going to be my hooks and weights box. So let's go ahead and pull this out and show you guys what I have that I usually keep in my hooks and weights. So of course you got to have your bobber stops up here. So got a couple of bobber stops. And I keep beads as well in here just in case I need to use beads. I'm sure there's clear ones in here as well. but I'm. Not too skilled at grabbing. Okay. okay. I actually don't have too many clear ones yet left, so I might need to go and pick some more up. But here's a 1 4 ounce lead weight. This is usually the size weight that I use with Texas rigs and stuff like that. It's a little bit big, but I usually throw some heavy artillery, so it's important, especially those manual monsters. It's important to get those things to the bottom. And they do have a big tail, which means they flap more and fall a little bit slower, but with that heavier weight, it makes sure that it gets down to the bottom quickly. And then this is the Gamakatsu EWG uh, G Mag oversized hook. So you guys can see there that it has a little bit of a bent shank on the hook, which also helps me with my hookup rates. I use these for the Magnum flutes, Magnum uh, old monsters. Any big worm that I use, I usually generally put them on this bait. And then I also picked up some swim bait hooks for some hollow body swim baits or just some hard body swim baits that I might use. It has a 3 8 ounce weight on the bottom of there. This is a Gamakatsu 6 aught. So that's mainly the brand that I use is Gamakatsu due to the fact that it's a little bit cheaper than Trocar and it's still very, very good hooks. And then I usually keep uh, 5 aught EWGs um, and then 5 aught offset J band hooks. And this is the offset J band. This is the EWG hook over here. So both pretty heavy duty hooks that I keep. I'm getting more 2 aught hooks just so I can have some for my drop shot, not drop shots, but Carolina rigs if I want to throw a smaller worm here in the tournaments because I need to scale down sometimes. Can't always go for those big big fish if they're not biting. You gotta, gotta just make sure you catch a limit first before you start culling out and getting rid of some of those smaller ones. But this is the Trocar big nasty flipping hook in a 6 aught size. So you guys can see that Trocar technology. I showed you guys this in a different video as well, but that's that Trocar laser laser sharpening technology, as well as with the Eco Pro tungsten. This is a one and a half, and it has that shrink tube in there, so it um, helps with the not breaking your line whenever you're using these tungsten weights, which really does help. So there is another one ounce one, just a little bit smaller. Also Eco Pro brand. So that wraps up that hook and weight box. Now moving on to probably one of my most used box just due to the fact that it has my jigs and spinner baits and all that stuff in there. My jig and spinner bait box. I'm just kidding. Uh, but here's some 
big one ounce structure jigs that I don't hardly ever use, but I mean, I have them just in case I need them. So one ounce structure jigs, very, very heavy, kind of got like a triangular spade head type feel going on there. One a more vibrant color, and then this one's more of a natural color. So have those two, and then keep on going with the jig thing. I have a three eighths ounce, I believe, jig here, the Greg Hackney Hack Attack jigs. These are probably uh, the only jigs that I use is the Strike King Hack Attack jigs for right now. I haven't really gone into more of the uh, other types of jigs, but this has just been the ones that I've had. Because I don't have too many jigs, I have enough jigs to where I can use them and not overdo it, you know, and have so many that I don't ever use them. So I just kind of keep it simple, keep the main colors and throw those. And then I have a... Uh, this is a little thing that I got on a mystery tackle box. I don't know the brand of it, but it's kind of more of a little finesse football head jig. It's not finesse, but I mean, it's just kind of smaller. Um, 3 8 ounce jig. And then this is the Rage Blade. This is a Strike King Tour Grade Swim Jig Rage Blade. And so, this is a green pumpkin color, and it's got the watermelon trailer on the back. I, I was using a Swim Senko on it, but the kick of the palatil kind of brought it too high up to the surface. It was running a little bit too shallow for me at the time, so I ended up putting something like that on, more of a crawl trailer that doesn't have as much action. And this is kind of like a little modification bait that I did. Uh, this was a striking spinner bait, but the wire of it broke. So I ended up cutting it, bending it back to make a little line guide. And then I put a live uh, Lake Fork Live Magic Shad on the back of it. And that's going to be a little bit of swim jig. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try to catch a fish off of it if we can. So we'll try that out. Let me put all these jigs back real quick. And next I'm going to be talking about the hollow body baits that I have. Uh, I got a lot, pretty into frog fishing whenever it was during the summer months. I was enjoying getting those topwater bites in the river and even in the ponds and stuff like that out on lakes. I really wasn't thoroughly enjoying it. And this is the live target hollow body sunfish. I pre-ordered it. Just got it in not too long ago. That's in the pumpkin seed color. So you guys can see very, very realistic. Um, has a nice line guide on it there, and then it's got the trocar, trocar frog hooks on the back. So I'm excited to try that out once it gets a little bit warmer. You can start using those hollow body topwater baits. And this is a popping frog. I did cut the legs of this one off. I did have it um, a lot longer, but I ended up cutting it for the tournament just in case to make sure I would hook those fish. So this is the spro popping frog, and it's more of like a leopard type of color. I really do enjoy that bait. That's a really good bait that I, um, as far as frogs go. And this is another spro. I haven't cut the legs on this one. I probably need to, but this is a spro, more of a natural frog color. Um, and it's really important to look at the bottom of them. I mean, I know the sides kind of, if you, you're turning it, kind of the sides show, but it's really important to look at the bottom of the bait because that's what the fish are going to be looking at, of course, whenever you, whenever it's above it. So you're not going to be looking. It's not going to be looking on the top like this. The bait's going to be up on top of the water moving around. So it's important to look at what shade of color you have on the bottom of the bait along with on the top. So this is a KVD uh, sexy sexy toad, sexy frog toad thing, whatever. It's got some rattles in there. Uh, caught a good fish on Juliet with this thing. Uh, didn't throw it too much, but it has some good rattles. So um, if it's windy conditions or anything like that and you need to have the fish key in on your bait, that's probably a good frog to use. This is a live target, a hollow body frog. Um, so this is more of a natural frog looking type thing. And I decided to get it because it looked good. So I haven't really tried this one out too much. It doesn't have any rattles and I'm pretty silent. But that's more of a darker presentation than my other baits. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these up real quick. All right, now moving along into the spinnerbait side of it. So I have some extra blades right here for my spinnerbait so I'm going to change it out. And then to go into what kind of colors I use, uh, I usually either focus on star shoes or more of a natural color, of course. So this is a uh, Gary and Meta Lightwire spinnerbait. This is one that my dad gave me. It has some sparkles and stuff on the blade, but very light wire, so it's a very good spinnerbait as far as vibrations and stuff go. So I've got a star shoes blade. I really enjoy using the star shoes blade, but if I'm not going to use a chartreuse, probably go either with double silver or silver and gold, I would say. I mean, I know there's not so many other options, but um, I really do, like, if it's on a chartreuse kind of presentation, I do like using a chartreuse and gold. But that one's got a double silver on it for the 
uh, dark, for a dark cheese, white and dark cheese, and that's a, uh, a big fat cur curly tail grub on the back of my trailer, and it has a trailer hook that comes with it. And so that was mine. Uh, this is more of a natural shag color. This is a four blade Booyah spinner bait. It's got the four silver blades on there, and then more of a white and blue type of skirt on there. So that's more of a natural presentation. And then I put uh, silver and gold on there on this one, just a more of a white spinner bait with a little kind of KVD caffeine shad trailer on there. So also a very good natural presentation bait. And then you have stuff like uh, smaller spinner baits in chartreuse color, or you can get a big blade like this, just a big single blade, and put a fat trailer on the back. Really big presentation, so that's also good. And one thing I want to tell you guys is you can always customize your baits. Don't be afraid to customize them. Uh, you don't always have to use how they come out of the package. And if you think, really think about it, it might be smarter to customize a bait rather than uh, fish it exactly how it is out of the package because what all those other fishermen are going to be using is stuff that's straight out of the package rather than your own customization that you do to it that you decide that you're confident with it. Um, so that's one of the big things I have to tell you guys is don't be afraid to customize your baits because I mean it really could help. It's a different presentation that the fish may have never seen before and you're going to come in there with a brand new bait and it might be hot, it might be not. So I mean you gotta, be, you gotta check it out, you gotta at least try it. So that's one thing I have to tell you guys about spinner baits. Alright, so the last box that I have in there is soft plastic, so I'll save that for the next segment of the video. But what we're going to be talking about is this right here. This is the swim bait box that I have. And it's got some good swim baits and it's got some not so good swim baits. I mean, but you can't really go wrong with... Uh... Alright guys, so this is the last box right here. The other box in there is soft plastic, so we'll save that for the next segment of the video. But this box right here, this is going to be my swim bait box. It has some really good swim baits in there. It has some kind of iffy swim baits in there. But I'm going to show you how I use each and every single one of them. Or maybe not show how I use them, but tell you guys how I use them. Um, I actually haven't ever thrown this one before. But this will probably be like more of a kind of a slow retrieve. It's very heavy, so you want to kind of keep it off of the bottom just so these bottom treble hooks don't snag. Um, I mean, you would have to throw this on some really heavy gear. Gonna have to use a setup like I have the Calcutta with a big fat heavy rod that's an eight, at least seven and a half foot, if not an eight foot heavy action or ex anywhere to extra heavy, somewhere around there. That's when you have to use these kind of big, big fat swim baits on. And then, of course, you have a smaller version of them. This is something that you can probably throw on 15 pound test. Once again, make sure you're doing a, more of a slow retrieve to let that paddle tail work back and forth. You want a slow kick, you don't want to necessarily go too fast because sometimes with these swim baits, whenever you go too fast, they'll drift from side to side and not have the right kind of natural swimming action that they should have. So I have two of these. One's a slow sink, one's more of a fast sink. And then you have something like these. These are cast steak, big paddle tail swim baits, and you can uh, fish these weightless or with a weight on them. So. These are some big paddle tails. I would also fish this very slow. Wouldn't necessarily go too fast with them because once again, they do drift from side to side if you do not fish them correctly. So I have a couple of those. And then going into something like this, this is a big fat uh, reaction strike bait. It's a, called like a baby herring or something like that, but it's not too small. It's probably about a 10 inch uh, swim bait. So it has some pretty good action as far as going back and forth. It kind of wiggles this way rather than the paddle tail kicking so much. And I have the weighted hook inserted inside there. That was actually one of my Tackle Day Tuesday videos. So if you guys want to see how I did this, go and check it out. So it's got the line guide coming out right there that you can tie it on and then put it back. So I'm seeing, gonna see if I can catch anything off of this. This is more of, again, more of a slow kind of reel type deal. But if you guys want something faster, you're going to have to get something like a shine glide or uh, maybe a glide bait. And that's more of like a twitching kind of action. Same thing with these, the reaction strike. This is kind of more resembles a golden shiner. So you would, this is a line through bait. So you put your line through the nose and it comes back into the body. And then the hook sticks up over here on this side. So this is a really heavy bait. So you probably fish this on the bottom along big rock ledges and stuff like that. 
Um, so that's pretty much all this is. And then there's some smaller versions of those in here. So probably same deal with this. You can just downgrade the line a little bit if you need to. You can throw this probably on a regular bait caster. Okay, next you have something like the uh, Berkeley Power Bait Slim Shaft along with the jig heads. So these are one ounce jig heads. You would fish this off of ledges or deep points. You just bring it up through a school of fish or a school of shad. And it resembles one of the bigger gizzard shads that might be in that school or a big threadfin shad. And you just pull it slowly along, dragging the bottom, make sure it's on the bottom, just bumping it along. And that's one of the main points that you guys use with these. So Berkeley Slim Shad has some pretty good action to it. It also has a crazy bad smell to it as well. Hey, other big swim baits, we had them tied on the rod from our last trip out to Juliet. So I actually ended up bringing the rigs in, which is actually pretty good. So I can actually show you what it is. And I'm going to go through what my dad has in his swim bait box first real quick. This is the Mega Bass Mag Draft from the My Inch. This is the white and blue back shad. So very good color right there. And what you do with these is you cast them out and fish them really, really slow. Because these also, if you, it has a very good paddle tail action along with kind of sideways at the same time. So it has a lot of action to it, but you don't want to fish it too fast or else it will start going sideways or even spinning in circles. So you don't want to go too fast. You might want to have like a 5 to 1 gear ratio on the reels that you use this on. So the slower you crank this, probably the better. Because it will have some action on its own if you just let it sink or let it slowly roll on the bottom, especially if there is current. And of course, my dad has some Huddlestons down here. This is a, I believe, a six-inch Huddleston in the blue, more of a blue color. And then he also has this one. This is the other one I want to show you guys. This is a 68 Special, so it has an eight-inch Huddleston tail on it, along with just the six-inch body. So it has a lot more action to it, as you guys can see. That plastic is kind of moving a little bit more due to the fact that the tail is so big on it so that's a pretty good swim bait if you guys want to pick up another one and see what else he has in here this is probably the only other thing that he has that's a little bit different from what i have this is the matt lures ultimate gill i got for him so you can fish this in various different ways of course if you fish it fast it's going to be close to the surface slow it's going to be dragging on the bottom so very realistic bait by matt lures very good looking bait so the matt lures ultimate gill that's what this is Oh, and there is one more thing. It's a pretty drastic difference from the size and as far as presentations and stuff go. Um, this is an old Optimum swim bait. Uh, probably about like 13 inches, I would say. <laughs> pretty crazy big swim bait. So if you guys want to know how to fish this, oh, it's actually cut on the bottom. Cool. That's not supposed to be there, I don't think. But if you guys want to know how to fish this, uh, you find some wire and you spool that up in your reel and you just chunk it and hope it doesn't break off. <laughs> so as far as setups go, the only reason why I brought mine out was to show you guys this Mega Bass Mag Draft in the odd U color. So that's my setup with the that's the Mega Bass Mag Draft 8 inch in the odd U color. Very good looking bait, so that can be more for whenever the water might be a little bit stained, or if you have more of like a blueback herring kind of uh, population of the lake, or maybe even the shad is a little bit darker than usual. Whatever it may be, you might want to use that, or it might even just be a better color. But this is kind of more of the ideal rig up to have. So what we have on here is the Savage Gear Shine Glide, Shine Glide. and that's the golden shiner color I believe or roche whatever they call it but this is a Calcutta reel along with the Akuma 8 foot heavy action swim bait series rod so this is my dad's setup it's a lot more expensive than mine so this is more of a newer reel a very nice setup very good feel very good casting ability so if you guys want to pick up a really nice swim bait setup, I'll go with something like this. This is actually 7 foot 11, now that I'm reading it. But that's basically 8 foot, you know. That pretty much wraps up this video, guys. If you guys did enjoy it, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up. Really would appreciate it for the hard bait segment of this bag reveal. 
Soft fades will be later on this week, so be looking out for that. And this has been Spencer from Bros, and we'll catch you guys later with another video later on this week.